So what are you supposed to do after you're done with Ground Zero? You have no tasks left on Ground Zero, you're getting bored of the map, or there's just not enough loot to keep you afloat and improving in the game. Or maybe you even reached level 20, and so you can't play on the map anymore. Where are you supposed to go from here? Naturally, most people would say just follow the quest line or the task line, whatever you want to call it, and go to customs after and start doing tasks for Prapper or any of the other merchants that you have tasks for to do on customs, or maybe even go to woods and unlock Jaeger so that you can do Jaeger's quests. Really, neither of those decisions are wrong, but in this video, I'm going to go over what I personally recommend to do, and maybe a little bit of why I recommend to do it that way. This is honestly just my personal opinion, and I don't think there's necessarily any wrong way to go and do different maps or where to go after you're done with Ground Zero. How's it going, everybody? My name is Magneti. Welcome to the Mothership, your go-to news source for extraction games so that you can stay better than your friends. So, where do you go after Ground Zero? I just talked about it a little bit in the intro, but this is my personal method. I will typically follow the tasks that the traders give me. Obviously, none of mine are going to match yours because I'm a little bit further. But, you know, just take whatever tasks you want to do, whatever trader you think you want to go through or go with. Typically, Prapper is a good way to go. You can do that uh, pocket watch quest on customs. That's not a bad idea. However, the method that I take is specifically after Ground Zero, I would start learning customs on a scav before I really ever go on my PMC onto any map, really. If you're going to start a new map that you've never done before, obviously you're going to want to pull up the map, let alone having a map, you know, obviously isn't going to be your cure-all. So that is why I always play on a map that I'm not familiar with as a scav first. So for example here, I'm pulling up a map for you. So customs. All right, so this is customs. I turned off all the markers and everything, but this is what the map looks like so that you can hopefully pull this up. Go to mapgenie.io forward slash Tarkov forward slash maps forward slash whatever map name you're playing, whether it be Streets of Tarkov or whatever else. But this is what customs looks like. And then you have all of these different toggleables over here. I have presets made, so Alt 1, 2, and 3 for all kinds of different stuff. And so I always have spawn point on as well as location and extraction. Those are the main three I always have on. You don't have to have anything else on other than this. The reason that you want to have these on, for example, location, so that you know the names of places that you're at, so that if you ever play with friends or you're watching videos or whatever else, you know what somebody's talking about. We've also got extractions, obviously, so that when you press O, you can know where the hell you're going. Fun fact real quick, old gas station, ZB1012, those two locations, those will have question marks next to your extract when you load in. What that means is that there is a element of uncertainty as to whether the extraction is open. So for example, at old gas station, there will be green flares in the front, that is how you know that old gas is available to you if it's on your extraction options. ZB1012 will have a floodlight on the front portion here, and that will tell you that is available for extract. A lot of maps have those features, but not every map does. For example, something like a vehicle extract is similar to on Ground Zero. There is a vehicle extract on Customs and Ground Zero. So obviously, if it is red in your extract menu or the car is gone, you know that it is no longer available to you. All right, so that's enough of that. So method to the madness here really quick. I'll just go over it really briefly. So after Ground Zero, you could do some tasks on Customs or you can go to Woods and unlock Jaeger. Honestly, if I was you, I would hope to gods that you are not staying until level 20 on ground zero i hope that you go to woods and or customs to do some tasks specifically going to woods to unlock jaeger that quest is fairly straightforward and easy customs some fairly straightforward and easy quests there obviously outside of dorms that can be fairly difficult playing with friends makes things a lot easier now so really to me the choice is yours you can go to Customs or Woods first after Ground Zero. However, I personally go to Woods while I'm still playing Ground Zero, again on a scav to learn the map, so that I can unlock Jaeger. Once I have Jaeger unlocked, I'll continue to go to Woods once in a while for some of the encampments that are there and the meds and other supplies. It does have a chance to spawn a lot of good loot. However, Customs will be my main game as well as Woods, honestly, for quite some time. Once I am done with Ground Zero, I move to Woods and Customs, and these two are pretty much my go-to maps for quite a while. Customs, not a whole ton of loot, but just a good map overall to kind of run around and get a feel for the game. Woods, decent loot, nothing crazy. Again, if you have Dorms keys on Customs, though, that would be good loot for you. Now, you could be a factory chad and learn off of factory, but I, again, am just sharing with you my method. 
So once I get tired of woods and customs getting sniped in the face repeatedly and just dying to pure chads on customs, I'll start running scavs on streets. You might think I'm a maniac, however there's really, really good loot on streets and there's just so much of it available to you. Along with that, you can run a scav on Shoreline as well. So these two will be my next two main maps that I play a lot on my scavs. However, I won't play Streets for quite some time on my PMC, but I will play Shoreline on my PMC quite a bit. So after Ground Zero, Woods, Customs, Shoreline, and Streets. Honestly, once you're comfortable, I would start playing Streets of Tarkov with your scav as often as possible because there is so much good loot, as well as Shoreline, honestly. If you just spawn on Shoreline and go straight to the gun range or the firing range, whatever you want to call it, there can be a lot of good loot there as well. Not necessarily high value, but just like decent middle of the road and lots of it. Sometimes there's good stuff that spawns there though as well. Streets is a very large map and it's very hard to learn, but once you start to get the hang of it, it becomes immensely valuable knowing where the spawns are for good loot and for general loot, knowing where meds can spawn, going through the bear camp, fighting the boss there, it, just all kinds of stuff. Obviously, there's a boss on woods as well as cultists on shoreline, and then you've got the resort on shoreline. There's all kinds of stuff going on here. So generally speaking, again, ground zero. I go to Woods and Customs, Shoreline and Streets. You can do whatever you want outside of what I recommend, but that is just what I am recommending to you. This is mostly a short and sweet situation for you guys to just kind of tell you how I progress. And again, biggest tip here, just take a scav into any map you go to that you're not familiar with. For example, Woods, Customs, Streets, Shoreline, whatever. It really doesn't even matter what map, it, except for Factory. I mean, I don't know why you'd take a scav to Factory. That's just me, though. The last thing I wanted to show you guys was just where the best places you can find valuables in the two maps customs and woods that i move on to when you play as a scav so number one place you're going to want to go when you first start out is crack house especially as a scav you might not always find stuff here but there's definitely going to be meds at some point and it's going to help you stay up to date with your meds and healing and all that type of stuff now personally for me I tend to go through a lot of barrel caches in general you can find there's three here by the bus terminal there's a few up here that spawn and some of the ones that I normally hit, these two as well. And then you've also got some interesting spawns for loot in storage as well. For example, you've got a possible Tetris spawn, and there's also a med car, like the trunk of a car over here with a med case in it as well. I'm not going to go over rooms that you can go into to get good loot because I don't want to expect that you have any keys starting out as a beginner. But if you do have keys for dorms or Big Red, there is a good possibility that there will be valuables in there. Big Red, a little bit less so, but there's definitely a chance. Something else to consider is the giving car, as well as at Old Gas, you have the giving tree. One last thing I want to point out is that you have the potential for a ammunition case valuable spawn in Warehouse 3 right in front of Old Gas. Those are all great places. Just hitting up barrel caches as you go around. For example, say you spawn up here towards military base, there's about two or three three barrel caches a couple of them aren't marked on here that are over by military base checkpoint and you've got this one here you can run through power station grab this one they don't always spawn but they are pretty common you run past here through new gas grab this one grab these two behind bus terminal stay away from dorms come through up the road cross the street go down here through rauf roadblock and if you really wanted to you could hit up crack house or maybe come through and hit up you know whatever way you want to get across the fence you could hit up old construction with repair shop and crack house just an example run and then you could extract at Ralph roadblock all right now comparably customs compared to woods woods is much much harder although it does have a little bit better loot in my opinion at least if you don't have any keys so some of the great places you're going to be able to find loot are going to be an abandoned village scav town as well as Sawmill. There is a good reason to stay away from Sawmill as a boss can spawn there, and it's sometimes fairly busy here, but uh, the cabins can spawn some good stuff. And then for medical supplies, you can come down here to Military Camp and grab a bunch of medical supplies. There's some Moonshine spawns down here. And then lastly, the USEC camps. If you spawn anywhere near these, there is no reason you shouldn't be looting these because you can get some pretty good valuable spawns in here as well. Barrel caches, I don't usually hit up too much on woods just because they're kind of all over the place and I don't really care to look for them and then obviously you have Jaeger's wooden lookout post next to the plane crash which you can loot a couple of valuables by the plane crash as well as for an example run on this map it's kind of hard because you can spawn in a shitload of different areas and the map is absolutely massive but if you spawn anywhere near these major points that I pointed out I would recommend just looting those up and then typically what I do 
I die a lot on woods because I get sniped all the time, but if I spawn anywhere down here on this bottom quarter or third of the map, I usually take a run through military camp if I spawn on the right side. Depends on where I spawn, where I go through. Loot up military camp, and then I take the lake around and then I go to outskirts. Obviously vice versa. Sometimes if I spawn down here, I'll go up to the USEC camps and then cut across and come down to any of the extracts over here that are available to me. But that's the basic concept. If you spawn up here, I don't spawn up here too often, but if you do, there's no reason you shouldn't be hitting the USEC camps, especially if you spawn over here. But again, just hit up what's nearby and just try to live because woods can be a pain in the ass. Oh, I almost forgot to mention. Also, be aware of sniper rock. There's a couple of very tall rocks in woods, but there's specifically one. I can't remember for sure if it's Sniper Rock or if it's up by Mountain Stash. I'm pretty sure it's Sniper Rock though. There will be a Scav Sniper up there from time to time, so just try and keep an eye out for any ginormous rock with a person on it. Might not be a Scav. It could also be a player, so just be careful. Now, I'm not going to go over streets, but I will go over Shoreline, and we're not going to use this map. We're going to actually use the 3D map that I have here. The reason I'm not going over streets is because it's absolutely fucking massive and there's so much to go over. I just want to make this a little bit shorter for you guys. So the best spot to go on shoreline, no matter where you spawn, in my opinion, unless you play as a PMC, then it might not be the best idea. But if you play as a scav, no matter where you spawn, don't go to resort right away when you're first starting. Just go to the firing range down here. I wish I could slide this around. You've got this firing range here. It doesn't really show you the loot on this map. However, this firing range has loot everywhere. There's two buildings as well as down range that you can go to loot a bunch of stuff that is really good. Outside of that, there's not a whole ton, but there are obviously POIs like the resort, got this radar tower place, and then you've got a few villages over here. I have not explored a whole lot outside of the firing range and the resort, so I can't attest to much of these other locations, but if I were to put my imagination to the test, I would say you have a good chance of finding a lot of food and med supplies over in the villages, and then random miscellaneous parts here, as well as random miscellaneous parts on the pier, which I have been to once. Now, if you have love issues with Tarkov, then you might have a bit of interest in watching this video. But other than that, if you like the video, go ahead and click subscribe down below and stick around for more Extraction Game news. Peace!